Okay, so now I'm going to do a quick overview of quasi-steady state uh, diffusion. And the example that I talked about in class was one of a membrane uh, that was between two large reservoirs uh, with a volume uh, VR1 for the first reservoir and VR2 for the second one. And uh, each of the two reservoirs has a concentration we'll label as C1 and C2 of the solute. And what we're interested in is the diffu what is the concentration profile and the diffusion going through this membrane, which has a volume of V uh, sub M. So what makes this situation quasi-steady state for this uh, diffusion through this membrane? Well, first of all, we can do a test. If the time it takes for diffusion through the membrane is much less than the time that it takes for the concentration to change in one of these reservoirs, then we can assume that uh, diffusion through this membrane is a quasi-steady state situation. Um, so when would this be the case that this time uh, through diffusion through this membrane is much less than the change in the concentration of one of the reservoirs? That's usually the case when the volume of the membrane V sub M is much less than the volume of the reservoir. And it makes sense where uh, the membrane is really, really small and the reservoir is really large, then the diffusion through the membrane will happen uh, very fast and compared to um, being able to change the concentration in a really large reservoir, being able to change that bulk concentration. So if that applies, then you can assume it's quasi-steady state. Another way uh, to recognize that this, this would be quasi-steady state was this equation here that I derived in class. Uh, 2 times the partition coefficient of the membrane times the length of the membrane times the area of the membrane. If this uh, term is much less than the volume of the reservoir, then you can also uh, assume that it's a quasi-steady state situation. So if it is a quasi-steady state situation, then our equation is just like a steady state diffusion where the concentration through the membrane throughout time is going to be considered zero. So therefore, uh, um, the diffusion coefficient through the membrane, d sub m, uh, um, it would basically be fixed second law through the membrane is equal to zero. And thus, knowing that, the flux through the uh, membrane would be very uh, exactly the same as steady state diffusion, except we're just looking at um, diffusion through the membrane, and we have here how we have the partition coefficient divided by the length of the membrane, multiplied by the concentration gradient, which is going to be the concentration in the reservoir one C1 minus the concentration gradient. Uh, sorry, the concentration in the second reservoir C2. So that's really quick and easy to figure out the flux through the membrane. And here's an equation that will describe the concentration um, in the membrane uh, at any certain time. And so we were able to derive this in class uh, to where we actually only need to know the initial concentration in the membrane, which a lot of times we uh, it may be zero, so the C0 could be zero. Uh, but this again is the initial concentration in the membrane and C1 is just the concentration in this uh, left reservoir. So um, initially I think we derived it from when we knew the concentration in both reservoirs but we're able to uh, mathematically uh, simplify the equation to where we only need to actually know the uh, concentration in one reservoir which is really handy in real life situations when you want to uh, be able to measure things and you only need to worry about measuring one side of um, um, of this whole setup. And so this this side of the equation uh, where we have our concentrations is going to be equal to 2 times the area of the membrane times the diffusion coefficient of the membrane times the partition coefficient of the membrane divided by the reservoir volume times the length of the membrane. And all that's multiplied by time. So at any time, uh, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it may be, we can figure out what the concentration um, is going to be in the um, um, in the reservoirs uh, C1, and the um, and we can figure out things such as the diffusion coefficient um, in the membrane. So that's really what this equation is going to help you out a lot with, is being able to figure out, for instance, 
we put this membrane in here and we don't really know its diffusion coefficient, we can really figure out the diffusion coefficient of the membrane. Sometimes it's a little bit harder. Uh, that's a little bit easier said than done. And so in a lot of biological cases, we deal with um, the permeability. So the permeability of a membrane um, or a layer of cells, for instance, um, is given by the diffusion coefficient of the membrane or that layer of cells times the partition coefficient divided by L. And uh, the, like the examples I gave in class with a uh, layer of cells on top of a membrane and you can be able to track the concentration of solute moving through the endothelial cell layer through the membrane to the other side of the reservoir. Uh, the permeability can be calculated. You can uh, measure the overall permeability of that molecule. You can also measure the permeability of just one of those layers, which would be the porous membrane. And then from that, you can calculate using this relationship the permeability of the endothelial cell uh, monolayer. Um, so from this, uh, this overall permeability, you can find an effective, uh, you can find the uh, diffusion coefficient basically of of your endothelial cell monolayer. So this is one way in which um, a situation to which we can consider this quasi-steady state use these simple equations to figure out the flux to the membrane as well as figure out other important uh, properties of the membrane such as the uh, diffusion coefficient through the membrane um, as well as the permeability of the membrane.